It might not seem like it, but it's actually been a long time since I've recorded anything for the videos. Um, it's been maybe a month, but I still have a backlog of videos that I haven't edited yet. Um, so I haven't actually run this for, I think, over a month. Uh, I have been kind of helping my sister dink around and get hers going. She's got uh, 15 or 20 batches done so far. Everything seems to be going adequately, though hers does have an issue that we're going to work on. Uh, besides, of course, the moisture issues on the front, which is just absurd. But hers also has a temperature issue with the... I think the thermistor is not registering correctly. So it says that it's warmer than it actually is once it gets down to the zero. Uh, I think maybe when it gets down to like 20 degrees, it starts to diverge with reality. Again, we have five thermometers in hers. We know what the temperature is inside at all the different areas. But her temperature probe that's on the screen uh, displaying on the screen never shows that cold. So I think the thermistor may have an issue. So we'll probably check into that. In the meantime, I wanted to change one of the pieces on mine that is on the new ones. And that's the, the resettable uh, thermostat piece on there, or breaker, the resettable breaker. So I'm going to add one on to mine. It may have a fusible a fuse type thing in line so we'll check that when we tear this apart but I'll get this set up we'll add a, a piece of wire for a jumper and then we'll add that wire coming from the power supply to this so that it will be protected with a resettable fuse in case there's an overheat issue and that could happen if you have the the relays on the board stick in the on position and just simply send power to the trays uh, without stopping. Um, that could be a bad thing. This is on their newer ones and I really like this idea, so I'm going to install that on mine. So to start with, or to finish up with, since it's already done, I want to make sure that I made this clear. I'm not suggesting that anybody do this, I'm not even suggesting it's necessarily a good idea, but I'd already bought this when I saw that they had them on the new ones. I did not know that there was the thermal fuse on the old one. If I'd known that was there, I might not have done this one, or I would have planned to remove this one and just put this one. I like this resettable portion of it, though hopefully you never have to use it because that means something else failed to make it uh, overheat. But I like that. I like the position of it. I like the fact that it's closer to the heat source instead of out here. But again, I'm not suggesting that anybody should do this and it may not even be a good idea, but I did it. That's where we stand on this. So whatever you do, don't do that. So we've got this over at the bagging bench area. Uh, it's the easiest place for me to work on it right now and be able to show it. So we've got the, the little, I guess, distribution block, uh, power block, and the wires going into it. I already disconnected the zip tie that was here and I'll be replacing that. And then going to press down on these connectors to get that out. And it looks like there could be some kind of fuse mechanism in here. And we'll be recovering it with, with uh, heat shrink tubing when we're done. One of the things I'm doing this for is the resettable uh, breaker or fuse. So that's going to go right in here probably. This is approximately where they have it on the new one and I really like how they've set up the new rack. Uh, I may tear this completely apart later so I can put bigger holes here, uh, oval holes. Uh, let's see if I can show that better. On the new one, this is kind of a really nice oval hole instead of just a small round hole. And I can see just from putting this in and out and what little flex it has, I can see little scratches on the insulation. So I may take this completely apart later and rework it, uh, rework it so that it has the, the newer shapes and also get a aluminum plate and form it for a cover like the new ones. 
they're really quite nice. We'll get these wires out of this block. Okay, get that out. Put this one back in. <coughs> Make sure these other ones stay in. So this is the whole distribution of the power. So the power is coming in on these two and then coming into this block and then these two wires go to the top tray heater, the one that's over the top of the whole thing. And then these, uh, there's four sets of them down here. And so there's four of them on this side, four of them on this side. Those are the two sides of the leads for each of the other tray heaters. And then these two are just the ones going to the thermistor to check the temperature, to control the temperature. Okay, and I can see that this is different, so there may be a fusible link in here. And I didn't know that. That's a good idea. It's good to know that they had that. Okay, and I will be replacing the heat shrink tubing here. And I can see that there's another connection in here. So, yeah, I'll need to replace all of that heat shrink. Because I'm going to carefully remove it. This seems to be a pretty good quality heat shrink. Some of them are kind of cheap and plasticky. And then the nicer ones seem more rubbery. And this one definitely seems to be more of a rubbery kind, which is a nice heat shrink. Okay, let's see what all is under there. So they do have a piece in here. And again, it uh, looks like it's taped up. So it looks like it's probably some kind of fusible link in there or meltable link. So if it overheats or a fuse, so I'll probably leave that in place, but of course I'll re um, cover all of that. And then I need to make up a little link for here. This will go into here attached here and that will go over here and then a wire to jump back to that spot. I would like to know what that component is. All right, so I've got numbers on it so we can check it to find out exactly what component this is. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this thermal fuse in there. My thought is that since it's only a 12 degree difference between these, this one's higher. But this one's back here and not touching the plate at all. So I'm assuming that this one could warm up first. Worst case is this one pops and I have to disassemble it and take it out. I don't need it there if I have this one. Um, but I don't think there's any reason to remove it right now. So I'm just going to leave it in there. In the meantime, added a spade connector for this end of it and then made up a little jumper wire for the other end. So this will go on here and then that'll plug into there. So then the route of power will go through here and then back to here and of course the return or vice versa. It's AC so it's going both ways. So now I'm going to go ahead and put some heat shrink tubing on this area. Uh, that and then this will cover the rest of that. I'll get those shrunk down. This would be a perfect job for a little lighter, which I don't have down here. So I'll just go ahead and shrink that one down. Okay. And add this one. Oh, and I'll just leave it like that. That's about where the other tape was before. So. And of course you gotta, and maybe that's why they didn't heat shrink it, because if they get it too hot, it's going to blow. Uh, that might be why they used a piece of tape. Yeah, I'll keep it cool. If it blows, I get an open circuit, I know why. Okay, I, I think I'm fine there though. Now, I'm going to add a piece on both of those. So we'll slide one down over the, both parts of that. This one should be big enough. That kind of helps stabilize them, I, I believe. 
Okay, and then because I'll have it short enough, it'll go over there. And this one will go here. Okay. I'll just shrink that down a little bit. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to cover these fittings. They really don't need that long of a piece though. Yeah, won't hurt. And I guess I could use the heat gun instead. And then that will be able to slip on there and still be partially covered. Have another little piece for this other one. Okay. And that will plug in here. And get that in there. Okay, and that's nice and firm. Get this one in there. Okay, so I have all those connected. And these two will go over to here. And I'll get that installed. And I'll now I'll get a new zip tie in here. I definitely want to tear this apart and put bigger holes in those. Got another zip tie here. Now we just need to drill the hole for that and for the rivets. And then that will be set. Figure out the routing for that. We'll get this measured. What I'm looking for is where is the shelf? So put some marks there. I just need to make it parallel to that shelf and get it up here. And we can come across. Of course, this block's kind of in the, the power block's kind of in the way, but that's okay. We can come across here. We know we're completely on this side of the holes. So we want to make sure that nothing goes above that line for this piece. So I could have it as far as that for the hole. And that, and I could put it closer and I could rotate it. Okay, if I do that, that gives me good, okay, that reaches. I can put it at this angle. Put one rivet here, one rivet there. Looks like nothing will interfere on the other side. So let's mark this as our center spot. Okay, so I'm gonna put the center right there. Let's drill that out. And then we can get the spot for the rivets afterwards. Okay, and drill that out to an eighth of an inch. Then I'll use this step drill to drill it out until this will drop down into it. Try to keep it straight up and down. Drill press would probably be a good idea for this, but not going to. Okay, I'm going to check on the underside to make sure that it's where I want it, it is. I'm going to have to go in and clean it up by hand on the other side afterwards because it's going to leave a burr there. Got a ways to go still. But it's coming along great. Try one more step still, at least. Probably a couple more. I don't want to overshoot it, so I better check at each stop. Not 
quiet. Goes one more. All right, there we go. Clean up all these shavings first, so make sure that none of them get to where they don't want to be. And we'll make sure we get all the metal filings cleaned out of there, because that would be a bad thing to get in any of the electrical bits. Can we see in there? Yes, we can. See, now we have a new hole there. Peekaboo! Okay, that's where that's going. It's didn't leave much of a burr either. That's pretty clean. Okay, make sure they get that cleaned off on the inside. Yeah, that's actually really good. Now, we'll figure out where the rivets are going. I think I'm going to put them uh, at, a, at a bit of an angle like that, because again, as long as I'm below that line, I'm good. This one will be a little bit lower, um, but it won't be much lower than the screws that are holding this. This goes all the way through and is sticking pretty proud on the inside. But the top of the tray, when you slide a tray in on this rack, is still below this. So it's not a problem. I'll mark for the rivets. A little dot in the center of each one of those areas. I don't like how close that one is here, so I'm going to move it over. So this further dot, not the closer dot. A couple of eighth inch holes. We have eighth inch rivets. So, go right there. Well, that's not a very straight bit. Okay, there's that one. Now, this one. Now, get rid of those shavings. Oops, don't knock that off. So I've had this for over five years now, and I never knew it had thermal protection there. That would have been nice to know. It gives you some peace of mind that uh, you're not going to have a runaway situation there. I better cut that excess off. This piece into position. That should work well. I think I'm going to pass this wire under that one. Come in here. Connect that up. Take this one. So I like the idea of a resettable. And because it's in contact with that, it seems like it'd be more likely to activate sooner than this one. This one's got a full half inch space or three quarter inch space under it. So uh, it is a lower temperature, so that would help. But I think this one would activate sooner. So I think that that new design they have is a really nice idea. Okay, in place and ready to go again. I really would like to uh, print, or not print, but bend a aluminum plate like the new ones have. Okay, there we go. And then on the inside, let's see if we can find it. All right, so that's ready to go back and get used some more.